Welcome to round one, the series where we play just the beginning of the game to give you a taste of what it's like. In today's episode, we will attempt to survive in the shattered and broken world of Tsukuyumi. The moon has been ripped down from the sky and the great white dragon has mutated the animal species of Earth and laid waste to the few remaining survivors of humankind. In Tsukuyumi, each player will represent one of these multifaceted, highly asymmetrical factions competing in a no-luck strategic area control game with a twist. Utilizing an incredibly unique action card system that dictates the orders, players must continually juggle the incredible strengths and weaknesses of their units while trying to focus their efforts on gaining victory by conquering territory and fulfilling goals and missions along the way. You'll see every move that we make, and after the dust settles, join us as we discuss our entire experience and find out which of us came out on top. Welcome to the table. We have the massive game, Tsukuyumi, set up right here in front of us. We've actually set things out in motion just to get things started, but before we do that, let me introduce everyone. As always, we have Ryan, Jeremy, myself, plus special guest, Matt from Gray Fox Games. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. Thanks. He's here to probably take charge <laughs> and hopefully not crush us, but he's going to kind of talk a little bit more about the game because this is a lot going on. This is a pretty significant, not you're, heavy, medium to heavy dudes on a map game for yeah, sure. Yeah, and if you haven't heard of the game, well, you're not alone. Uh, we've barely heard about yeah. it because it has a very limited release. It was kickstarted, what, Matt, two years ago, but roughly? 2016, right around there. And yeah. it came out in Germany, and it saw a very limited release. And we've never had the opportunity to get it to the table. And thank you, Matt, for yeah. finally bringing it to our attention because this game is incredibly variable. And when you look at games like this, like Rising Sun and those style of games, all those have some variability into it with the factions, but these factions are so completely different from one yeah. another. They, in fact, change the way you play the entire game. Yeah, if you've ever thought, well, if you've played a game and you thought, oh, wow, this is crazy, you have not seen anything yet. <laughs> these factions are vastly different. Yeah, so it's, it's all about being completely different. Uh, like, for instance, I have 13 units on the board to start off with. Jeremy has three. Yeah. So there's a big difference, not just in types of units, but you're robots, I'm bugs, he's boars. I'm boars. <laughs> right, it's all kinds of, and that's not even the stuff that we're not even playing with at this time. One, so. one thing we also need to mention is that we are playing with the original version of the game. Yeah. The new Kickstarter version is going to replace all of these standees with miniatures. And Correct. we're talking, what, how many, two, almost 200 miniatures? Yeah, the, uh, with all of the factions and all the add-ons and everything, it's going to be 199 miniatures. Oh, and that, wow. that's just what we've got done so far. 76 unique sculpts, 199 models. Uh, and that's, we haven't even had the meeting yet about, are we going to add any more? So <laughs> we, 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 199 is not good enough. We need to be over 200. Right? And they so. look awesome. Uh, the artwork is fantastic. And we've seen some of the minis. And we'll probably put some of them up while we're yeah. talking here so you can see them. Uh, it's going to be a massive undertaking of a game for yes. sure. So the game is an area control style game. It is a dudes on a map. There's going to be a lot of combat. But each of these factions plays so differently that there are times in the game when you don't want to do combat with the other players. Yeah, right, you just right. want to spread out and control areas. There's very few victory points to score in this game, so you're going to have to be selective about the way that you utilize your units and when you capture those points because each of us has our own unique mission off to the side, but these are shared missions. I can complete Ryan's or I can complete Matt's missions as yeah. well. They just may be a little bit harder for my faction to do so. And those missions come with each faction, so depending on what factions you pick, there are going to be potentially different missions on the table. Yep. Making for a different game, depending on how you mix everything together. Right. So. so we've already set up the base game. You have the center. This is the moon that's fallen down. Right. And it's created these Oni. And the Oni are kind of like the AI or the NPCs of the game. Right. Uh, they're controlled by the game. You just want to combat them to be able to possibly score victory mm -hmm. points for very specific objectives. Each player is also going to come with a number of units. Now, as Matt alluded to, each of these units are varied. All of them have a conquest value, all of them have an attack value, all of them have a health value, but the amount that we start with is dependent upon the faction that we're playing. And we've already seeded the board as such. Each of us have a home tile that we placed and we have three of these controlled areas that we're going to be able to start with, with an X number of uh, different uh, factions or members yeah. on, on your area. I started with three, so I don't have a whole lot of things I can do. In fact, 
my entire faction is built around five guys. Yeah. He, he only has five people in his faction. He has some other miniature or some other standees over there, but those are upgraded versions. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the things you want to focus on here is this initiative track. Yeah. This is going to change throughout the game, but based on the balance of how these factions start out, there's an initiative track that says where to start. And we've started with Ryan in first, and then I'm coming up last. So we're going to go around the table in that order and tell you a little bit about our factions. Yeah, so I'm playing the Cyber Samurai. They are a group of robotic ninjas, samurai basically. Um, I only have a couple units on the board. I use a lot of drones that can both attack or defend. But the real meat of the Cyber Samurai is these, these umply, uplinks. And I get to start with three uplinks in play. And these are basically satellites that are way up you know, in the orbit that nobody can mess with. There's a ton of uplinks and they all do different things. I always start with one that produces drones, and I get to choose two others. Me being me, I've decided on the Tetsuo Orbital Laser that can shoot down and destroy places on the map. Um, so it'll be fun to see how that plays out. Yeah, and remember, no one else has these sorts of things in the game. He's yeah. the only one that has that type of element right. with his faction. Yep. Yeah, and, and what <clears throat> Ryan is, just to give you the story, they're the guys that brought the moon down to the earth in the first place. The nice job. You know, Great job, is Ryan. Charged. Right? They went up to the moon. They tried to kill the moon. Bring the, There's a dragon inside the moon. And that's what caused the whole thing to, to start off with. So like usual, just blame Ryan for everything that's going wrong. Exactly. So that's I'm, right. I'm, the, I'm the dark seed. The dark seed are, just think, lots and lots and lots of bugs. If you don't like bugs, this is not the group for you. <laughs> so <clears throat> he has five. I actually have, there'll be 35 models in this faction alone. Wow. Um, they, they're not very strong. You can squash them like nobody's business, but we like get bugs. to, they just like bugs, right? And you, we're, my whole goal is to spread across the board as far as possible, right? Um, I don't want to fight you. Like, there's not a whole lot of combat going on here. There is options for it. Just not a lot going on. I'm just going to spread and I, I lay eggs. I have a bunch of eggs down. It's just going right. to be. You, when you get destroyed, Eggs That's get right. laid down and you'll yep. pop right back up. You can pop right. You can kill ten of my guys, and I can next round I can pop ten of them right back up. So. All right, I'm the third player in the or turn order. I'm playing the Conf Group. These are a bunch of mechanical robots. As we said, I have five different ones. Each one of these can be upgraded to a better uh, robot of the same type. Uh, and I have the ability to do a couple different things. I can throw missiles with uh -huh. one of my guys. I can fly with a couple of them. I can actually shoot into adjacent areas. Most of the combat in the game is for control of very specific hexes. I have the ability to shoot adjacent hexes as well. Pretty cool faction. And, yeah. it's, and it's a weird balance of trying to control five guys and five guys only. And so. you get to drop a nuclear warhead, right? I can. I can drop a nuclear warhead and do all kinds of massive damage. Plus, my guys are like beefy. They can uh, soak up a lot of damage as yeah. well. Yeah, so I am fourth in the lineup, and I am playing the Boar Lords. The Boar Lords in an area control game have some pretty unique abilities because I'm going to be manipulating the board, so to speak. Uh, one of my big abilities is to terraform, and there's a number of different things I can do to terraform. There's going to be blockades between hexes. I can tunnel under those so that I can travel through those hexes that no one else can. I can put blockades up. I can fortify to hexes. So there's a lot of things I'm doing to the land in order to spread out and sort of build up my defenses. So once he's built into an area, it's very hard to uproot him and yeah. move him out. All right, so we've already seated the board. Let me walk you through what you're actually doing on your turn. It's, it's, it's a pretty simple game to play. It's really about using the right kind of cards at the right time. Every player is going to be dealt six of these action cards, and this is kind of a draft. You're going to pick one of these cards, lay it face down in front of you, and pass the cards to your left. Once that's done, everyone is going to reveal your card, lay your cards face down, and these cards have two different actions on them. They have a white action on the front, which everyone's going to partake in. There's four different actions. You get to select two of them in turn order. Mm -hmm. So we're going to follow this turn order guide. Once everyone's done the white actions, you're going to turn it over. And this is where the meat of the game comes in. Each of these action cards on the back side have a variety of different things that you're going to do. And we'll talk about those as we get into the game. But they're typically things like moving, spawning new Oni, Oni using events and doing a wide variety of things, even upgrading your stuff and getting production points to do things. Yeah, and the other th cool thing about these cards is some of them won't even have all of those abilities on them. Yeah. So this one just has the red action. So if I play this card, when it comes to the blue actions, I'm not going to be taking anything. When it comes to the green, I'm not going to be taking any. But 
in most cases, this is going to be a very powerful red action. The goal is to gain victory points, like any other game, right? So there's a variety of different ways to score victory points. You score victory points from your personal mission, other players' missions. For instance, mine one here says destroy three Oni at any point in the game. You will mark this card with some of your faction tokens, and once you complete it, you're going to put one of your tokens on top of the card to signify you get one victory point. Yeah, right. And everyone's going to have one of these missions. Also, you have victory points on your actual player board. These are very specific goals that only you can complete. For instance, mine says I have to destroy six of these NPC or AI characters in the middle of the board called Oni on one turn. And each of us have our own little goals, and these are going to provide an X number of victory points. There's also victory points for area control, and that's right. typically done at the, end uh, of the game. at the end of the game. Right. You do have the ability to score one victory point every single one of the rounds, but you have to control the center of the moon. Right. So it's very hard to do. Yeah. So there's also Tsuki, Tsukuyumi symbols on the board. Correct. Tell us a little bit about so, those. Tsukuyumi, these are, you'll see them here in the center of the board. These are the Oni. Uh, they are controlled by the game, per se. And in reality, they're controlled by the other players. Yeah. So any space that has the Tsukuyumi, which the moon is all Tsukuyumi, and there's a couple more seated around the board. There's one over there. Uh, <clears throat> so during your turn, you're actually going to control putting these out on the board if your card has that action. So once you do, you'll put them out and you can choose whichever ones you want. You can put the big ones out, you can put the little ones out, which are over there, and you put them where it's the best for you. For instance, he wants to kill as many Oni as possible, so he's gonna wanna put a lot of smaller Oni in front of him. For me, even small Oni are gonna hurt me, <laughs> so I'm gonna put them all in front of Jeremy to make sure that he can take care of them. What actually I wouldn't, I'd put them in center of somebody else just to cause problems. And it's not just these spots, there's a variety of other terrain types. You have terrains that are biohazard that only certain characters are safe in. If you end your turn, you're going to die. There's locations that if you control at the end of the game, being these uh, the, fertile degree, areas. the fertile areas, you get victory points. Uh, there's also like the mountain uh, scapes. These have numbers on them, which tie in very directly to your ability to do conquest actions in there. And a lot of these tiles, when you look at them, they also tie into control. Like Ryan has a goal here that you have to control a mountain, you have to control one of the white spaces, and so forth. So all these train types do mean something else as Correct. well as just looking pretty on the board. Not to mention, in the spirit of variability, this board can be set up in just about any way you want, right? Yeah, you can move it. So these are all movable tiles, right? And you'll actually probably see us do it where we draw some cards and we change some yeah. of the tiles. And just to give you a little secret, there's a faction that actually changes the tiles of the game. Yeah. So you can make it nice and long, you can make yourself a nice path. The one that always stays the same is the moon. Everything else is up to you. And one final thing we'll say before we get into the game, the tiles are also double-sided. Uh, if you'll notice, there is a faction that can actually burn the landscape and make it fiery. It's because there's dragons in this game. <laughs> right. They've thought of everything. I right. mean, there's really yes. a faction that interacts with these tiles and the gameplay in a variety of different yeah. ways. All right, so we've started the game. We've each been dealt six action cards. We've each selected one of those action cards, and we're just simply going to play that face down in front of us, and we're going to pass the other five cards to the player on our left. You just set those off to the side for now. You won't need those until the next round. Then we're going to enact these cards in turn order. So Ryan, you and your Cyber Samurai are going to be the first player, and he's going to pick two actions from the front of this white yeah, card. Yeah, we're going to do the white phase first. Yep. All right, so my goal, first of all, was to control one fertile ground, one mountain range, and one ocean floor. I was lucky enough to have these three tiles right next to my starting base, so I've actually already completed that one. So I'm going to mark it wow. with, with my token. And that's very normal. Some of the, the yeah. game conditions when you start, you can yeah. position your base in a way that you can score these right off the bat. We, we, did, we set up the game before, but you get to put your base where you want. So I kind of looked yeah. around the board for an area that had all three of those. Luckily, there was one right in front of me. So I was able to do that one already. Yeah, that setup is a very strategic part of the game, in right. fact, as you're setting things up and determining, especially with that turn order, yep. if you're going last, you're going to have a sense for how everyone else is set up and where you can position yourself. All right, so my two actions, my first action I'm going to take, move each of your units up to one area. So I'm going to start moving these guys in. So these guys can come into here. And that's all of your units. That's it's not every just one. unit gets every to move one unit. space. Yep. And I actually don't want to abandon this fertile ground because it is worth points at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to move all those guys in. Kay. And then I'm going to execute a combat action. And I have a hand of, for me, it's three combat cards. And combat is handled differently for every faction as well. Yes. Yeah. So in this case, I'm going to choose Conquest. This allows me to actually take control of a tile if my Conquest value is equal to or higher than the enemy's. In this case, I have a total Conquest value of 40. They have 20. So you're just comparing the numbers on the tiles themselves. 
However, every one of these combat cards has a counterattack. And when the Oni are being attacked, the lowest ranking player, which in this case is David, gets to choose a counterattack option. Yeah, this is a really interesting aspect of the game because the card he's playing to do the conquest has basically the other players, or in this case, the Oni's defensive abilities. Right. And it's different for every single card. So the conquest and annihilation cards are the same for every faction, but then every faction has their own unique uh, cards that are conquest and annihilate actions. Yeah. He's just using the standard conquest action for now. The other cool thing is about these combat cards, when you use them, they're not gone forever. They're going to bounce back to your hand, so you can use them in subsequent mm -hmm. turns as right. well, which is pretty cool. There are some cards that are limited per round. Once but, per round, right, sure. But, but most of them, it's not, you don't play it and it's gone. You can play it over and over and over and over again, as long as you have combat actions to cover. So in this case, I have the choice between a counter strike, which isn't really going to do much right now because Ryan could so absorb the damage, but I'm going to retreat. So I can retreat the Oni. I'm going to retreat him over here to potentially make things a little bit more challenging. He just wants to make him harder for on Matt. It's a little harassing yeah, for Matt. Right. There. Yeah. Zero attack value. Back. So I do get to conquer that tile, so I'll put down one of my control markers to say I control it. And that actually completes my, my secret objective as well, which is to control four, the four different terrain types, and I have all four. It might seem like we're completing these objectives really quick, but the, this game is only four rounds. Right. So you really are going to be completing at least one objective every round. Yeah, it's four rounds, but it's four really robust rounds full right. of actions. And he just put a giant target on his back. Exactly. Right. And now, those are the only <laughs> three points we're going to let him score the entire game. And that's game. fine. Yeah. What, I, what I like about this game specifically is that once I have this, I can't lose it. Yeah. So yeah. It's the, I don't have to keep constantly fighting for control of this one space for the rest of the game. No, I the can, idea of grabbing points when you can is a good idea. Yeah, for I can sure. give it up to Jeremy when he comes after me because he'll come after me. Next up. All right, Dark Seed. So. Like I said, I don't want to do a lot of fighting. I'm going to do a little bit of fighting here and there where it works for me, but really all I want to do is cover as much of the board as possible. My special is controlling seven areas, right? And my unique mission goal is conquer six areas in one round. Well, I can do that in multiple phases. That's what is great about here. I can do it in the white phase, the red phase, multiple phases. So it's possible. It's hard to do but it's possible. So what I'm gonna do right now with my white phase, uh, I wanna produce. I, I always, always, always wanna produce. That's the best thing for me to do. So cool thing is, is I can make my units or I can upgrade existing units that I have into new units. So these, these insects get bigger, nastier, and uglier. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some more, uh, put some more of these guys out there. I have one point, let's get, let's get a breeder out there. Yeah, as he does this, I'll explain it using my board. Across the bottom of your board, you have all of your units listed and the production value. So he has a certain number of production points right. to spend, and those are going to be associated with different types of units. Obviously, the lower ones over here graduating up. Yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, these the white phase is basically a smaller version of every phase that's on the other side. So even if you're missing them, you're going to have a tiny little taste of all those actions mm -hmm. that you can choose from. Right. So I chose that action there, and I'm going to move all my units one space. That's a lot of units. It is a lot of units. We're not going to move them all, though. But the best Pause thing the here, camera. Right, right. We'll all right, guys, come back after this commercial break, and we'll take care of everything else. But no, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move a couple units. Now, note, too, that he just moved into a radioactive area, but his faction is immune to radioactivity, Correct. so all, he's good there. You know, they say cockroaches will survive the apocalypse. Yeah, right. This is living proof right exactly. here that You're that's going to happen. And so what I'm going to do there. here, these red lines that you see on the board, these are blockades, right? But if you notice, I move my wasp right across it because some units can fly, and flying units ignore blockades altogether. Yep. So they just flew right over the top. And so what I'm doing is just moving a couple of units. And actually, I want to switch that up here. Also, spreading out helps protect you from something like Jeremy's nuke or my laser that right. shoots yeah. down from the sky. Exactly, yeah. So like, I, for me, and it really doesn't matter. I'm going to lose a lot of units during the game because when they die, they just come right back as eggs. So if you want to zap them, Go for it. Oh, I do. Yeah, it's going to happen, right? <laughs> You'll just stay tuned, right? Don't get too attached. So, to units. <laughs> so I moved everything and I produced, so that's my white face. All right, I am going to take uh, the action that allows me to produce as well, and I am going to bring out my, hmm, it's a good choice. I think I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with my shield guy. This guy is a massive unit. Massive units can only move once and once only, even if I have the ability to move them twice. They're so, so slow and lumbering yeah. that they can only move he's once. He's huge. This Beowulf guy is, is gigantic. He's a sponge. He has 50 conquests. He has 50 health. That's crazy. He has 25 attack. He's just not going to be to beat down by anybody. To put that in perspective, anybody. that's the same as my three guys combined. That's yeah. the same as my whole well, let's talk. Combined. Let's <laughs> talk about these three guys combined because I'm going to attack them just because you got a lot of victory points, and I'm going to execute one combat action. 
I have this guy here, and he, I, I don't even know if I want to pronounce this guy's name. Freischutz? Freischutz. 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 He's a sniper, and I'm going to use my snipe action, and this allows me to do 20 points of damage into an adjacent area that cannot be counterattacked. So I'm going to just destroy these units. Yeah, we had 20 total health there. In retaliation for oh. his getting three victory points. This is a once per round card, so I can't use it again, even if I have combat actions on the other side of this card. And those it's are my two actions. A, it's a unique card, too, in the fact that Jeremy gets to control where the damage goes. Yep. Normally, when you attack, Ryan would get mm -hmm. to control how the damage is spread Which out. Which, in this instance, it killed everything I had anyway. Right, and that's why you can only use it once per round. And round. there's no counterattack option for nope. me there. Which You're is just gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not to mention he's doing it from one space away, which right. none of us can Not do. to mention that it felt good, too. <laughs> <laughs> we did. It served it me no fun. purpose in the game, but it satisfying. felt good. Well, you know, Blocking other people from scoring, since this is such a small point spread in this game, yeah. it's almost just as important to block other people as it is For to sure. pursue yeah. your own goals. Yeah, and this is not a happy get along together sort right, of Right, and that's game. an important right. thing to realize is that that had no victory points. It's not going to get him any victory points later. Just slows him down. Just Makes him think him about down, the next right? card he has to use. So, so it's me. I'm going to do a couple things. First, I'm going to produce. And instead of producing a new unit, I also have the ability to upgrade. I'm going to upgrade one of my squeakers, which is my littlest of boar lords, with a <laughs> borier. The littlest boar lord. And the boriers are actually pretty good tale. units. The boriers have a really cool ability to terraform. They're the ones that will do a lot of that for me. So I upgraded the squeaker to a borier. The next thing I'm going to do is... Hmm. Move each of my units. I think I... I'm not going to do that. I'll draw an event card, actually. There we go. I thought about doing that. So when you draw an event card uh, and play up to one event card, so I can draw this and keep it, or I can play it immediately, um, I am going to hold on to it. Mm. Now, because I'm holding on to it, when I play it in the future, it has to be during this blue phase. I can't just play it any time during the game. Yeah, when the cards tell you, you can, yeah. basically. All right, so that ends the white phase. Now, we're going to go through that entire turn order again. However, the first player is going to turn over their card and reveal it, and they're going to take yeah. their blue phase action. And we'll do all the blue phases and go through that, so to speak. So my blue phase allows me to draw an event card and potentially play it. So if you wouldn't mind handing me one of those. I do mind, but I'll give it to you anyway. <laughs> and I am actually going to... Retaliate? Play it. Um, we this is something gonna, bad coming. No, it's not really. This is going to let me turn a tile in any direction. So I'm actually just going to turn this tile. Oh, Kind of like this. And just kind of make it a little harder for Jeremy to, if he wants to come in. Cool. I'll have to go down and around. I hadn't seen so. a, an event card like that. Yet. No, that's pretty interesting. So this will just go to the discard, Keep that pile. In discard pile. here. And then I get to use my faction effect. My faction effect is uh, I can use my orbital lasers. Uh oh, here it comes. Or, I mean, sorry, I can use my uplinks, and I'm going to use my orbital laser in this case. Here it comes. It, it does 10 damage. I could kill your two five guys, but yeah. actually. Oh, what? There's a goal on the board to kill Oni. Okay. So I want to take out one of those Oni that has only 10 health. Okay. Oh, so, so which one would you like to do? Because there's one here, there's a small one there. You don't want to do the one where he is. One of these Let's, here. I'll, I have to do the one where he is, actually. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because if I do it to that space, the one that has 20 health will just soak it up. Yeah. Uh, and it won't kill anybody. So I'm going to put so one marker that. near yours to, mark, to remind myself that I did kill one Oni. Kay. I have to kill two more by the end of the game. Okay. I've survived the grace of Ryan. All right, so I'm second place. The, the fun thing about the blue phase is you get to do all the crazy things. This also changes the turn order because this is where it has the spots where you can move up or down the turn order. So I don't want to go second anymore. So I'm going to move mm -hmm. up because that's one of the options in my blue phase. So now in all the phases going forward, I'll be going first, mm -hmm. right? So that's that one action. I'm going to draw one event card and play up to one event card. I'm totally going to do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was a quick, that was a super quick. So I get to do a combat action, right? Oh, right so away. Beautiful. this is what what I want to do is I want to take over unit the areas. I don't want to fight people. You can fight spaces and you can fight people. I want to fight spaces. So I'm going to go to these places that nobody else is, right? I'm going to go here because that is where. The fertile ground. Fertile, fertile ground, right? And I'm already there, so let's do it. Now, what we're doing is we're kind of skipping the action because there's nobody in that space. Right. I'm playing the card. There's nobody there to counterattack. The space has a value of zero, and I have a conquest value of 20. So I win. We just right. kind of skipped that whole process there. So I went ahead and did it. It's done. I got my space taken care of. Yeah, right. that's what's nice about the beginning of the game is because you can go into territories that are empty and mm -hmm. just take control of them very easily. 
I am next. Well, I, get, I got one more. Oh, you have one more? We got I got one more. Now I'm going to use my faction effect, right? Oh. My faction effect, I get to do two different things, and I have three choices. Interesting. I can move all of my units. All of my units are considered flying units. Hmm. Or I can play. I can plant eggs with my breeder. So you can make them all flying and then move them all. If I wanted to. Oh, right? interesting. Yeah, my, That's my, cool. I'm the swarm. Uh. I'm called the dark seed, but I might as well be the swarm. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to lay some eggs. Now, can you do one of those twice, or has to be two different actions? It has to be two of these abilities. Okay. Right? Okay. You can oh. do them both. If you, if I wanted to lay two eggs, I could. But really what I want to do is I want to lay a couple of eggs. Cause I Are you sure you don't want to make them fly twice? No, because <laughs> I'm actually where I want to be. Yeah, because yeah. my second action, I get to use my Conqueror. Uh, he's a special unit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sacrifice him. So he's a little warm. He explodes. And when he explodes, I get to do a combat action. I'm going to Conquest again. Oh, man. And man, I'm going to wow. Conquest this space right over here. Right? So I have... So he already five. has five. I have five, five units seven. already. It's up to the Boar Lords to come in yeah, there and right. bet you from Lord's Lord's Right? So I've yeah. taken over... Or you could have nuked them. Right. I've taken two... I still <laughs> could. Yeah, he can still shoot a laser at me if you want to. But I've right. taken control of two areas already. I only have to do four more in order to right. reach my special goal. So I still could. Is that your blue phase? That is my blue phase. You have to I'm do all four done. more in one turn. In one turn, right. All right. My blue phase, I get to draw an event card event and possibly play it if I so wish. Uh... Oh. <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, that sounded like a good one for him. <laughs> right. At least a tough decision. Uh, yes. You can play only it? be used on unstable zones. Now, oh. we haven't talked about unstable zones. There's uh, events that can make areas unstable, and they're printed on some of them as well. Uh, the card I drew, which I'm kind of giving away, can only be used on, on an unstable, unstable zone. zone. So. Yeah. Don't go to unstable zone, guys. <laughs> well, we already got we only have one on the board right now. Yeah. Like. On the board, right. And then I'm going to also climb up in the initiative track, according to my Just card. Just pushing me further down. And the final yeah. thing I, did, I get to do is I get to use my faction effect, but... I have no faction effect just because I'm lumbering robots. Oh. I guess I get oh. no special abilities. Well, your guys all have special abilities built into right. them. Which that is, is very cool. true. So you're I'm too cool for faction effects. With my blues. I am not too cool for faction effects. <laughs> uh, but the first thing I get to do on this card is draw three event cards. Oh, boy. Oh and goodness. play up to three event cards. Which means you could play the one that you had earlier, right? You still can, yeah. Yes, because it's saying I can the, play up to yeah. three. Yep. Uh, and you can do these in any order, too. The yeah. actions that are on, in your phases can be done in any order, except for the red phase, but we'll go over that once we Can you that. play the cards out of order, or do they can only be played on your turn? They can only be played when a card says you can play them. Yeah, you have okay. to go to your blue phase. And yep. Well, oh. the, the reason I say it like that is because there are event actions in other phases, Got depending it. on the cards that you have. Got it. I mean, the factions are varied, to too, but these action cards are super varied as well. Right, right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play a couple of these. One is to mark any area... Uh, as unstable. All right. Oh. So oh. I'm going to. I'm going to. Oh. I shouldn't know that information about Jeremy, but I'm going to give him a target. I think, <laughs> and it's not going to be me. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and say. I feel like he's coming towards me. I well, you are about to complete your objective. I think I'm going to oh, right there. Says the guy who's already completed his objective. Yeah. So the white cat's well, not I me. Just, I, I already got it. mine. Um, and yeah. then I'm going to. Place a blockade marker in any area. Oh, boy. So that's a swamp card. In any area. In any area. Why don't you come over here and protect me from Jeremy? I am actually going to place no, a blockade. No, I want to do that. It's going to place it between us. Right so here. It's going to put one, a wall. If I've learned one thing about playing games with Jeremy is keep him far away from me. <laughs> Uh, right. That's my uh, first step, and then I'm going to okay. climb up two spaces on this chart. Wow. Moving wow. Ryan and two? Jeremy down. I am now all the way to last. Oh, man, that was a two one. And then I'm going to use my faction effect. My faction effect, like I said at the beginning, is to terraform. I have all these options. Each of my warriors can terraform. I have three out there, so they can each do two. I'm going to build some tunnels. I'm going to build a tunnel right here with this warrior. I'm also going to fortify that area. Uh, with this warrior, I'm going to just fortify the area a couple. Nope, I'll build a tunnel as well. Man, you guys are tunneling beasts nope. over there. Scratch that. Fortification. Oh, you can put more than one fortification in a space too? Yeah, they oh, stack. Oh, wow. And then I'm going to build a tunnel here. Stay away from me. And fortify that area Dang. too. Dang. So yeah, I can get a lot done with those You're warriors. right, they really do change the board a lot. But just for you, right? We can't use those tunnels. We can't use yeah, those tunnels. Mostly for my ability. And now later, if I create a blockade, obviously, that's every, something everyone's going to have to deal with, except for me, unless, you know, if, if you I tunnel, tunnel through it. it. Right. So that's my blue phase. All right. 
All right, so that's all the blue phases, is that right? <clears throat> yes, now the tides have turned and I'm in first yes. place now, yeah. so I get to go first. And this is my favorite phase when I'm the dark seed, because I am- <laughs> The production phase? Production phase, right? So cool thing about these guys is not only do I get the production that's on my card, but I get production from my units as well, which is why earlier I built this guy because he gives me extra production. So I get two production from my card, right. and then I get three, four, five, six, seven. Wow. So wow, so you mean we need to come for that thing is what you're telling me. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm gonna tell you. He's gonna run, like I can run away. One of my cool fat defense abilities is I basically run away from everything, and I don't lose a lot of units. I, I lose the little guys, yeah. but that actually works for me too. So, so. seven production. Seven That's production, crazy. right? That is so crazy. The cool thing about that is, is I can upgrade some of these things, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and change because it looks like David's coming for me. I'm gonna upgrade these guys. Into warriors. Oh, that's a, a that's an alliance tunnel that I built. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> it's an alliance it's, tunnel. It's the tunnel of love, everybody. <laughs> yeah, it's the tunnel of love. <laughs> tunnel of love. Um, and then I'm going to also gonna produce. Now, normally when you produce, you produce on your zone. A couple of us have special abilities. I can produce where my breeders are. I can produce where my planter is, and I can produce anywhere that there's an egg. So if I want to place an egg, I have an egg right here. Oh my gosh. So I can put it there too. So in the later rounds, if you guys want to come for me, it just gives me that much more space that I can spread out. Right. So come for me if you, you like. You just pop out anywhere basically. Basically, By the end yeah. of the game, yeah. Yeah, by the end of the game, I'll be covered it and you'll just be annoyed with me. Right, <laughs> so that's, I've only even spent two right now, so this is going to take a little bit of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some wasps out so they can fly. Right, that's three. Of course. Right, and I feel then like we're, we're all at a giant disadvantage right now. Right, and he's sorta. spreading like a virus across. I feel the like board. we're just going to kill each other, and They're he's right. going to just do whatever he wants. I'm going right. to upgrade these warriors into stingers. Oh my gosh, those right. look oh, those, deadly. The bigger the tile, the worse I feel our right. situation. Uh, right. So that's that's only five at that point. So I still got two more. I'm gonna put another one of these guys out. Oh, so you can explode them later. Yeah, so I can explode them later. That's exactly right. So I put him where an egg was, but I could also put him where, actually, you know what? I'm gonna have him come from the, the planter instead. Yeah, of course. So then I get one more. Let's throw one more out. Let's throw another one of these guys out, and we'll throw him out right there. You know you're oh doing well when you have so many production points, you're like, uh, I guess I'll do this I guess too. I'll do yeah. this, right? But what's not like to have that many production points? Yeah. It wouldn't be unheard of for me to have units all over the board. Wouldn't uh -huh. be impossible. Well, I can see that after, not even done with the first round. Right. Crazy. And then we get to do an Oni conquest, right? So oh. this is where the Onis kind of fight back a little bit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what you do with an Oni conquest basically is you choose the Onis in a space, and those Onis can move into an adjacent space and then conquer the zone. They're not going to attack you as a person. That's not what they do, right? They're going to conquer the space instead. So what I want to do, make this... Very hard to control. <laughs> yeah, very hard to control I think is good. Actually, do I want to mess with... No, I'm just going to make this very hard to control. Now normally, somebody if I went into a space where somebody else is, mm -hmm. now I could go into the spot where the Drakentoder is, but he's huge and nasty and we're not gonna mess with that. There's just not enough Oni on the board, right? So we're just gonna move him into the moon. Now normally, whoever's in last place, which is Ryan, could choose the Oni's counterattack. So they have different counterattack options with their card, which we've got right over there. Yep. So we're just gonna move him out. We'll play the Oni Conquest card. Nobody there to counterattack, so they have their own little Control markers. So they've controlled the center They control space. the center of the moon. Nice. They don't get anything for that. It's just there to, to kind of wreak havoc with right. everybody else. Sure. And that's it for my green phase. I think that was enough. All right, so for my yeah, green phase, I, think so. I, I also I get to place two Oni. So give me two of the biggest Oni. When you're choosing Oni to place, you can choose any Oni you want, like yep. we said earlier. So they all cost if the same. you want to destroy them, you can place little ones next to you, or if you want to make things difficult, like right. I do. Right. You can, can place, place big them ones. anywhere that there's this circle space, this purple circle, yep. that's a Tsukuyumi zone. So you can place them over there, or you can place them anywhere on the moon. You know what? I'm going to place them right here, because I feel uh. like you emptied that out for yourself, too. <laughs> what? I did not. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you make that accusation? guys right there <laughs> make it a little more difficult. Then I can execute one Oni conquest like we just did. Hmm. Hmm. So now what he can do, and I'll just go ahead and throw myself out there. He can move into the space that I'm in. That's true, and take it back from you. He can. Any of those spaces. Yeah, that's what I think I'm going to do, See, is move these guys. I come in as a, as a guest. <laughs> is that right? And they just take over my stuff. Into that unstable territory okay. and play the conquest there. Okay. So I'll take so that. So you get the card. You get to choose a counterattack option. Right. 
counterattack option is versus I, I get to choose it because he's coming after me. So I have lots of different options that I can choose here. Um, I can't choose. Let's see here. And oh. right now, the Oni have sixty conquest versus his. 10. 10. So they're going to take it back. It's really a matter of what I do. And you really can't do damage back to those only, No, right? and that's You're... one of my options, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm only going to do 10 damage, and that's not going to do anything, nope. right? So I'm not even going to bother with those kind of things. Uh, there is an option that says you shall not pass, and if I have more conquest, then I could do something special. There's all kinds of different stuff. What I'm going to do is my signature move, which is called For the Queen, right? So For the Queen, basically, half of my units die and the other half go wherever i want oh, wherever you want wherever i want anywhere adjacent really so oh, wow. um, so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say you know what see you later worker it doesn't matter to me but he died so now we have an egg in that space right now he's going to go into the space you just left so he, he's just thanking himself that, control that, that space wasn't him that switches died. over right unfortunately for me though control of the space goes away from me and it goes to the oni like i said they don't get anything but that stops me from controlling seven areas, right. which is my special So goal. one of the cool things that you take note here of, in a lot of these types of games, you'll find, like Jeremy said earlier, they may be fighting over here, and Matt's left over here with me to try to do something about it. In this game, everyone can take control of the Oni from time to time and play that sort of additional player, if you will, to go yep. in and mess with anyone on the board wherever they're at. Yeah. Yep. You don't have to wait on somebody else to do what they're supposed to do. Right? Exactly. Like, come on, guy, do it. You can just take care of it yourself. I'm always that guy who's yes, not right. doing what he's supposed to do. Do your responsibility. Thanks. All right. Uh, my production, I get three productions. And I'm going to bring in oh, no. this guy here. That cost me one. Yep. And then I'm also going to bring in two of my swarm missiles with him, each one of them also costing one each. Oh, and you can use as many of those missiles as you want when you fight. Like, you can just start shooting missiles at everyone. I can. Oh, that's See, Jason, too. I just want to point out, too, this is another one of those moments in the game where you're like, wait even. a minute, you yeah. have missiles? Like, he has little tiles, he has <laughs> missiles, he has two different types of missiles and a nuke that he can create and then use those with his units. Or and if then, he wanted to, he could upgrade his units, too, and make them stronger. And then I get to execute one, e one Oni Conquest. Stay so, away from me. I already had my stuff. So, <laughs> is that right? this is moving take an entire those, group, take right? Take those 60... Those, yeah, those take guys. those two guys and just keep moving them just, forward. What? Let's just so what, destroy what Matt. Is this? <laughs> this is us hey, ganging up on hey you Matt. instead of Ryan. Hey, Matt, come to our house <laughs> and play this game. And we're just going to beat you into the ground. That's I, how we roll. I think we're going to go here. So you actually, this is where I'll stop you. You can, uh -oh. you can oh, that's his conquest home. my home. You can oh, attack, can see that you you can attack my people with your units, but since well, you only don't that. attack, yeah. you, you can attack this fertile ground. That's the fertile ground. Does he own that one yet? I do, yeah. Oh. All right, so we have 60 in there. Yep. And you have 40. <laughs> so you get to this use the Oni Conquest card again. Let me yeah. guess. You're gonna let, me, your... let me just continue to demonstrate how this card works. Rinse and, you guys. <laughs> Rinse and repeat? <laughs> right, we're going to do the same thing, right? So <clears throat> there is an option where I can place an Oni according to the rules. So I could go place Oni over here and make it difficult for him. But in reality, I need to protect my planner, right? My planner does bad things, right? For to you. Us. <laughs> yeah. For me, he does great things, right? But I need to move him, right? So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to sacrifice. We're going to play for the queen, right? Yep. So I'm going to sacrifice, and the sacrifice is rounded down, right? So I'm going to lose one unit, so he dies. And then if I want to... Another egg. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Another egg in that spot. These guys can move into two different spaces if I want them okay. to, right? Okay. Which I totally do, but I want them to move together. So we're going to move them right back there, there. right yeah. into that spot. All so right. as you can see, you can come in, Show but I'm just going to kind of squirm around yep. and kind of do what I need do to do. I do have an Oni token, unfortunately. I'll pass that back. And right. keep in mind too, even though he did the same thing in reaction both times, that's going to vary depending on what faction's on the receiving mm -hmm. end of that. That yep. just made a little bit more sense for his faction in those two instances. All right, so we that's are me. on. Uh, you. So it's me. First thing I do is activate my satellite. Um, it automatically builds a drone in any space adjacent to my home zone. So I don't like what Jeremy's doing to me, so I'm going to put a shield drone out. What about what he's doing to me? What have I done to Well, you? I'm just you snipe my guys, so I'm putting oh, shield yeah, drones do, out. I did do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did kill all his people. Shield drones can soak a lot of damage, so maybe mm. it'll be a little easier next time. Then I'm going to produce units or upgrades with a value of two. So all of my satellites cost, and I'm going to spend two to build my Shogun satellite. This actually beams down a unit, the Shogun, 
which comes out at my sweet. space. Your biggest, craziest unit. My biggest, craziest unit, which is about <laughs> one fourth as powerful <laughs> as any of Jeremy's <laughs> units. Yeah, right. but no. yeah, still, but five, yes. still five times more powerful than my <laughs> units. Right. Now, Matt, a quick question. Can he have as many of those uplinks out? He can have as many uplinks out as he pays production sure. points yep. for. Okay. Right? And that's the only way to get the Shogun is to bring the Shogun satellite out. Interesting. Right? Very now, cool. I'm going to place two Oni. So I'm going to get to... You want to put them over here with everything else? I'm going to put them over there in that space. <laughs> so that Right maybe, here? Yeah. I don't want them too close to Jeremy. I don't want them too easy to kill. Sure. And then I get to do an Oni Conquest. So let's take those and just... Move them right into that. Let's just keep picking on Matt. Okay. No, move them into that that's, top space. That's oh, a right good, here? I think that's yeah. a good idea. Considering that he seems to be playing these Dark Seed as if right. he knows what he's doing. Yeah, and so I, you've <laughs> got you've got 30 <laughs> Conquest to his 20. So, sorry, Matt. You want to... You I'm, need the card anymore? I don't know. I have the card, <laughs> card memorized. Card memorized. So I'll tell you, though, it, it, might, it might be like... We might, we might be reacting out of emotion, but... When you see all of those swarm tokens spread out across the board, you just want to fight them. <clears throat> no, which is a cool part of any game, right? Is when you have that sort of emotional reaction, like, right. should I be doing this? It feels like I should be doing right. this. Right. So in reality, like, I don't really care if they come and attack me. You, like... Oh, we, you care. I mean, <laughs> you care. I mean, deep level. down, there's tears <laughs> it's inside. Out of, it's out of love. Man. Right, it is. So one, one of the things that we include in the game is a, is a book of strategy, right? So kind of give you tips on how to play each zone. And in the Dark Seed strategy, the first line is, be prepared to lose units. <laughs> because your units have very low health. You're going to spread across the board, and they're going to die a ton. So I'm not really concerned. I just put seven points of production out in one round. Right, and that's right? why right. we're coming at so, you so And they've hard. only taken off two points of production, so I'm still well ahead of the game. Plus, so. my Oni are not very effective against Jeremy, and if I move sure. up against Jeremy, I'm just putting them in a position for him to nuke them all. Right, exactly. He wants that to happen. Yeah, I feel like right? Jeremy's units are just, no one's going to want to go near those guys. I don't want to go near them. I, I don't no. like that I started so close to him. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to play retreat, which is a little bit of a different option. So I'm just going to retreat my units... Oh, so no explosion, spots. no egg. No explosions, no eggs. No, I don't think oh, that's the right that's one. The wrong, so nice try, though. Nice try, <laughs> man. <laughs> Thanks for keeping me honest, guys. But reality, like, that's the cool thing about these guys. Like, if you come after me, come after me, but I'm just going to keep spreading. Sure. It's actually yeah. going to, you guys attacking me have helped me spread more than my actual movement that's actions true. were going to do. So it, His, that, his plans come together. There. Right. And that is, Thanks for working for me. That is the end of my green phase. So, okay. so now we're on to the final phase of each of the cards. That's the red phase. This is the phase that's typically moving your units around and then doing combat yeah right and the key thing here is to remember movement first then combat yep. it'd be a little bit too much if you could combat first and then move so let's see if I can redeem myself over any of these units there's right there's no redemption for you no there's no redemption for me well, well, we'll, we'll, see. Well, we'll see. see I guess I'll just go I, I feel like you just want to target on yourself yeah, I feel like right? here's where he spreads out a ton <laughs> right so what I what, what I look at here is I have options right I can go into the Oni space and try to fight back because I have some of my stronger units there. I have these guys right here as well. They're a stronger one. I have a combat card called Kamikaze, which basically, like I said, my units like to die. I can just dive bomb my stingers into that space. So not only will they do 15 points, or they'll do 20 points of damage each, they'll do 15 points of damage from their health, which would just wipe out all of those if I really wanted to, which would help me score that goal. There's a nice yeah. balance here. Yeah, yeah. Do I want to spread? Do I want to achieve that goal for one point? Do I want to achieve this goal for one point? What do I want to do? And honestly, I want to take control of as many areas as possible, and so I'm going to do that. So I have movement, and I have combat. I have one area to move. You can move each unit each one unit space. One space and I have four combat actions. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my. Right? right? So, oh, and you've already taken two? I've already oh, taken two. So, that means you so can this take... is what the great thing yeah. is, is that even though I lost that zone, I can still get my goal. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because I, I sacrificed the conquer earlier, so now I'm going to take care of everything else. So what we'll do is we'll take care of this space, so this space, this space, and this space. So just I don't have conquers. quite enough to take care of that, so unfortunately there isn't anything that I so can do. So you're not going to use your move? You're going to pass your I'm move? I'm not going to move at all, all right. because I want to I get this goal first, because this is the hardest <coughs> right. thing to do for mine, because what that's going to be is conquer. That <laughs> one. That one. That one. You going to try this one again? Nope. <laughs> and then that one. Which also completes David's. You took control of it is. conquest of two Sugiumi spaces. Exactly. Wow. So I've conquered two, and now really, here's the thing. I was only able to do that 
because you guys attacked. Well, thanks a lot, everyone. So secretly, I you didn't guys... do it. <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't participate. Secretly, you guys fell into my master plan. In spirit, you, right? you had our master. And did you get? And you got your yeah. personal one as well. So, so you just completed oh, three objectives three in one. Three in one. So wow. Felix, uh, Felix is the designer and illustrator of this game, and we were talking last night, and I said, "We'll see how well I do with the Dark Seed." Because I and you're also don't. the developer of the game. Yeah. So this is this is true. Kind of right? helps you. This along. is true. But so as much as the three of us yeah. look like idiots, we're not really that <laughs> dumb. Okay. Now Felix. Will be proud of me. So, they, they, <laughs> Felix, that one's for you. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's this one. Six in one round. That's this one. And wow. two. That's that. Did one. you have fun narrating that just now? You did. I did again. <laughs> All right, David. What do you got? All Figure right. Around. I feel like um, anything you do right now is just like. Yeah. Right. It doesn't yeah. matter. All right, guys. <laughs> I can here. destroy <laughs> Ryan completely, and it won't compare to that move. Yeah. Okay. I get to move each of my units up to one space. I am going to do that. Um. So I'm looking at this territory now. I need 30 mm -hmm. to conquest it because he has a unit in there. So I'm going to move my Borier and my Squeaker there, which will give me 30. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to move handy little tunnel. this Borier over here. Uh, what do I need there? That's 30. I'm going to move my Borgard. That's a, your Borgard is 50? Is 50. Dang. Yeah, over there. Not a ton of those. There's only two of the, or as, three of those units. As well as my, as my Borier, actually. Uh, no, I'm going to have my Boar Mother. And earlier we talked about where you could spawn. My Boar Mother is another one of those units where I can uh, create, spawn produ units produce from. units from. So she's, like a she's like a mobile base, basically. I'm going to move her <laughs> here, she, actually. She move her there, and that's my move. And now I get to execute up to three combat actions. Yeah. So yes, It's no four, but you know. No, yeah. it's no four. <laughs> it's no four. Here's the easy one. It's going to be this one. I'm yep. going to conquest that. Here's the not so easy ones. I'm going to start with this one right okay. here. I've got 30 to the 30, including your 10. And I've got to choose a card to play now because he's got a unit in there. And yeah, one yeah. of the cool things about the Boar Guard is they have a conquest and annihilation action in one. It's called stamping. You can do it once per round. Normally, when you're attacking, you're attacking either the space or the people. This is one of those unique cards that lets him do both. So he can kill some bugs, and he can take over the space all with one card if he chooses to. I don't I'm, want him to, but he can. <laughs> right. I'm actually going to use that card. Thanks for the hot tip. Stampede. So this is Annihilation plus Conquest, like Correct. he just explained. Man, it's like I was predicting the future. And or now something. he has to choose one of the defensive <laughs> abilities, which okay. might come back and sting me. No pun intended. <laughs> Ooh. All right, let's see what's going to happen here. So I'll just kind of, kind of give you the options that he has here. I can counterattack, right? There's Counter-Strike. But I, I'm almost never going to choose that option as the bugs. There is a one called Trampled to Death, which means one of his own units gets trampled to death. Oh, interesting. Right? Or I can place and remove a blockade in the area. I don't really want to worry about that with him. He'll probably mm -hmm. just tunnel right through it, right? So what I think I'm going to do, because I'm not too worried about this, guys, I'm going to choose Trampled to Death. So you lose a unit of my choice. Oh, wow. In that space. In that space, yes. right? So I'm guessing so it's the Borier? It is going to be the Borier, because I know your faction effect lets him build stuff in that yeah, space. Yeah. So I'm still going to lose my guy, but like it's cool about me, here comes an egg right back in the space. Now, is he still going to conquer because he, he has is. a high, he's higher still, strike? He still yeah, gets started. Right? Okay. So I still conquer the territory. And then finally, I'm going to conquer this territory right here. I've got a 65 conquest to the 30 there, so I've got enough. And I'm in last place, so I get to choose the counterattack on behalf of the Oni. That's yeah. correct. I'm oh, going to well. play this one. This is safe enough. I'm going to play just this Conquest card. Regular Conquest? Yep. What option are you going to choose there? I'm actually going to choose... How, how much health does your big guy have? 20. That big guy has 20 health? Mm-hmm. I'm actually going to do Counter-Strike and have all those defending Oni do their damage back to you. So that's 40 damage. Now, he gets to choose where the damage yeah. goes. So it's going to kill all of David's units. Oh, it will. It will. <clears throat> but you still control the space. Yes. You took control of it. They died. I needed one more guy in there. Yeah, right? one more guy. So Sorry, my mistake. David. That's okay. That's okay. I'll well, bring him back. The good thing is, will. The good thing is, is that... But you still take control <laughs> of it, right? Yep. That's, so. that's the thing with counterattacks. Your action is going to succeed no matter what. It's just what happens after right. that fact. So Yeah, definitely be aware of all of those all counterattacks. Right. Was yeah, that your that, three? That was my three actions. So yeah. I've I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, one more. Uh, one shy. Right. Yep, one shy of that. my goal, right? All right. 
So my turn. All right, I feel like we're going to see some missiles here. Yeah, probably. We're going to see some fun stuff here. All right. All right, so this guy is going to move here. Okay. This guy is going to move here. He can fly, so he's going to nice. go over that train. Okay. This guy is going to go here. Oh, boy. Uh -oh. Interesting. This guy is going to go here, and this guy is going to go here. So we're basically going to try to take over the moon. <laughs> All right, now I have two combat actions, but in fact I have three because my uh, unit charter. here yep. gets plus one yep. for his area that he is sitting in. Okay. So he gets to do one extra combat action in here. Oh my! So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Holy Conquest. Yes. Um, Sounds fun. Do I want to do a Holy Conquest or I just want to shoot stuff at Ryan? <laughs> I vote so for that's shoot stuff at Ryan. Question, right? yeah. that's Why, not <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> Why not both? Why not both? You do have four combat actions. Well, he... It's three, right? Three, three combat yeah. actions, yeah. So the first thing I will do is I will annihilate Ryan. Okay. In this area here. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> it's 75 conquest plus 20 because I have him in an uh, adjacent... It's, just, it's damage, damage for annihilation. Yeah. yeah. So, so he does... He does, he does 40 damage. Plus 20 damage because I have this guy who's adjacent to you. So he you. does 60 damage. 60 yeah. damage. And I've got 40. Yes. It doesn't look good. Well, one of the uh, things... That's a lower <laughs> number. <laughs> Ryan's checking to see if there's some loophole. Well, I mean, there, there is. I'm almost certain he won't find. There is a loophole. Okay. Um, because I have an interesting ability that I can choose to double my health, right. basically. Okay. Yep. So he's doing um, 80 or 60 damage, mm -hmm. and I will double all my character's health. So I actually have 40, 56. I have... 80 health now. So you double them individually. So you're probably still going to lose a unit. Yes. Yeah. I'm definitely going to lose a unit because he's doing 60 damage. Yep. I'm going to lose two units. Yes. So doubling maybe doesn't help you. Yeah, it does. It, it does. It doesn't make all three of them go away. Oh, they I would see. all three die normally. Oh, I can't see him. He's behind Counter-Strike actually doesn't even really help me. No. I could kill his unit, but I'd still lose all mine. And I want to keep at least one guy alive there. So I have to take the cyberoid off. Yep. And then one of the others. And one of the others. Okay. So I will take off the one that that's... felt like you weren't going through your options. It was going through your lack of options. That's true. I mean, <laughs> I really needed to do that double. He just had too powerful of a situation going on. Right. That was a good power. So that's situation. one action with so him. So I still get two combat actions. Right. The next action I will do is he will do annihilate. You gonna fight I again? Think, I think I may fight. Um, yes, we're gonna annihilate this area. Just completely destroy everything. Oh, wow. I'm throwing rockets with my guy here. He's mm -hmm. shooting 50 points worth of rockets in that space. And it's plus 20 because oh, I have him well, adjacent. Oh, they're all dead. Yeah, so they're all dead. Yep. Yep. Uh, all right, so that will complete this. I'm dealing me. three Oni and uh, to that's you. That's me, actually. Yeah. Well, and you can give me that objective. Yeah, I'll take put that it. up there. Now, when Ryan was taking those off, even though it didn't matter because he had so much damage. And these are expended, right? That's correct. Okay. It's a one-time use. If he'd soaked up... Uh, if there were 20 points of damage left and there was a 20 and a 5, yep. he could have used the 5 to soak up 5 and then there'd only be 15 left and it wouldn't kill That's the right. 20, right? That's right. No, damage doesn't go over round to round. So if there's 10 points of leftover damage on a 20-point unit, that he's going to come back full health, yeah. ready to go. So Yeah, it's really cool how that a, comes into play. Yeah, a little, little, which, when you're playing with this big guy right here who's got 50 health, that's what you use him for. All right, yeah. so the next thing I'm going to do is Holy Conquest. This uh -oh. lets me take one of my territory markers and put it in adjacent area. Now, did you have an ability to do three actions? Because yep. he gets a free action. He gets action. his free action. Oh which he my. has a built-in attack. Yep. Oh, my. And this is going to let me do 20 points of damage into it if I have him adjacent. So and I get kill to still get to choose an option here. Sure. Yep. Um, I will choose Reactor Overload and destroy any one unit in this area. Yep. So I will destroy him in turn. Nope. Wouldn't that? And those are my three combat actions. Okay. Wow. All right, Ryan. Just I'm going to move this each. This is just round one. Yeah, round one of. <laughs> and basically, that Four served rounds. me no purpose yeah. other than slowing him down, knowing what his combat card is and knowing what he wanted to accomplish right. and get more points. Now I've kind of set him back for yeah, a Yeah, you're rounds. planning for the next round. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because I only get to move each of my units one area. So one here. One here, and I will conquer this, and nobody can really stop me from doing that. And oh, that this is, one flies? Yep, yep that one All flies, so fly. pops over. Nice. All right. So that is basically yeah. Yeah, that's round one. one. Round. That's <laughs> round one of four. So as things progress, things are obviously going to change on the board. You've already noticed that 
This is not a game where you're going to kill guys and get points from those guys. Unless you're Jeremy. Unless you're <laughs> Jeremy. But you're really getting those points indirectly. There's very few points to get, and it's it makes you rethink how these types of games play. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to finish out the game and join us when we're done on the couches to talk about the entire experience as well as maybe some other little spoilers from the Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. We are here after the whole game, and we've got some things to report. <laughs> uh, first things first. What you didn't see there at the end is there's always going to be an end of game or end of round scoring for the center space on the moon. I don't think anyone controlled that at that point. No. Nope. Uh, we did control it, a couple of us, in different times for the rest of the game. But the scores ended up pretty tight as we expected. This guy over here, of course, no won. Surprise. He had 16 yep. points, followed by Ryan with 15 points, and Jeremy and I, who played very different games, both ended up with 14 points. So an incredibly tight spread yeah. of points there. Uh, but yeah, we all got there in very different ways. It's a super asymmetrical game. I think that's the big allure for all of us. Like we had mentioned during the round one, how you play some of these dudes on a map game, and all of you play functionally the same game, and you may have some slight powers that may change, like attack values or range values. But the way that these guys, the units, and the way that they work with the cards that they have and the combat they have is completely different from one another. Yeah. Yeah, it's completely different, but they still utilize the elements in similar ways. So it's not too much to wrap your head around at the same time. No, not at all. So speaking of wrapping our head around it, you, we didn't really talk too much about the setting. Sure. Like you mentioned really briefly that there is a dragon in the moon. Sure. Uh, yep. But tell us more As about that. Is. Start with the dragon in the moon sure. and the lore there. Just like regular life, there is a dragon yeah. in the moon. Right. I'm just kidding. It's based off Japanese folklore. As you can see on the box here, there's a white dragon on the moon or in the moon. So it's a big egg. Like an egg. Yeah. Yeah. So Ryan's faction, as we all know, Ryan is evil. So he went up there and he took the moon down, and the dragon came to Earth, and that's kind of what caused everything else to happen. So. Yeah, so that turned boars. Into, into the boar lords. Right, turn them into people, right? Uh, caused the creation of the mechs to fight the Oni, which are the people who went to worship the moon and lost their face, became, you know, the faceless evil Oni, and it's what caused the bugs to rise up, and the other factions too that we you didn't get to see today, but the dragons, the whales, the, uh, uh, the last tribe of humans, the nomads are out there, the children of the, the lion, uh, it's an African tribe with mutated beasts in it. It's all yeah, kind of stuff. I, I really want to play with the whales just so I can make whale sounds the entire game. Uh, yeah, so well, how is the Kickstarter structured? I, I know there's four base factions. Mm -hmm, yep. And then what else can people expect, maybe even outside of the factions? Sure. Yeah. Sure, I'll give you kind of the, the basic rundown of what we're doing here with it. So you have you have the four factions in the base game. So you have the Boar Lords, the Dark Seed, um, the Oni, of course, are going to be in there. Uh, then you have the Nomads and, oh my gosh, why can't I the remember? Samurai? Samurai. Samurai, thank you. The Cyber Samurai are in there, right? So then this is actually going to be a base game and expansion because that's what this is right here. This is the After the Moonfall expansion. So okay. the expansion is going to be the, the mechs that you played. So you got to see an expansion faction oh, for cool. today. Um, and then you're also going to see the Children of the Lion. And there's going to be a Kickstarter exclusive faction in there. Some of you who know the game might know what it is, but you're going to... You're going to see some pandas out there, I think. Oh, so. boy. That's awesome. And then there's an add-on, too. So we've got some really big, cool ones, the dragons and the whales. Those will be add-ons because they're, uh, as we said, these are all miniatures. These guys are going to be big, big miniatures. So It's going to be a big box. Big box, yeah. <laughs> we're going to have a big box. We're trying. We're working on this right now is how we're going to have a box that fits everything in wow. one box. It's, it's interesting to see so many different asymmetric factions. Yeah. And from what we've seen before, the balance is there. And also... They all tie in very specifically to the narrative, too, mm -hmm. which I yeah. really enjoy that. Oh, the style and the look of the whole thing is really <laughs> appealing to me personally. But yeah, the, the variability, and you just mentioned, I don't know how many factions total, but the designer... Nine factions. Nine factions. The designer, though, has in mind... Like, oh, he's man. built yeah. this... Because when we played with factions, you start with your initiative order. Mm -hmm. One of you had one, two, and three. Yeah, it was one, two, and you were 13. I was 13. Yep. So... There's room for other Growth, factions yeah. there, just based on the numbers for the starting position. Yeah, the, the the designer and illustrator of this, Felix, same guy, Felix Merdicat, started off as a comic book illustrator, and so this is his thing, right, is making worlds. He made a world, he made a game, and this world is already bigger than what it is now. He's got... He, he likes to throw numbers out there. I won't do that here, but he's got a lot of numbers that he is thinking about doing. He's, he showed me some pictures the other day of 
of a new faction that he's working oh, on. So wow. we're, we're already thinking out past this stuff. So outside of the asymmetry in the factions that we saw, you also mentioned off camera, mm -hmm. some differences to the base game that you'll sure. be adding with possible epic events. Yeah, you're going to see like a that. lot of modifications because it's, there's so much variability in just changing the people, but also different ways to play. Uh, their two-player mode has different goals. Uh, we're working on a co-op mode right now where everybody fights the Oni specifically. Uh, on the flip side of that, you can also play that one versus all. We're working on that. Um, mm -hmm. We've got uh, our mascot expansion. Uh, it's a, every faction has a little mascot that you try to protect the whole game. Um, then we've got all kinds of different epic events. So, so many things and cards. We're working on a leadership. Uh, so you'll be able to pick leaders of your wow. factions, which cause different things to happen. We've got so many things in the pipeline. Felix and I have been working on it. Uh, Felix is uh, based out of Ludwigsburg, Germany. King Raccoon Games, they're, they're awesome. But he's been working on this stuff nonstop since this game was released and for us to have for this Kickstarter too. So, so people that have played Tsukiyomi obviously are familiar with those standees, right? <coughs> yeah. Uh, you guys are going to miniatures. How are you mm -hmm. handling that transition? Because yeah. a lot of the sure. information is right on it's there. The, it's the question of the century for, for our veteran players, right? And what we want to do is we want to kind of we want to eliminate the fiddly, right? So we don't want you to have to pick up every miniature and move everything around. So what we're going to do is kind of have these little scorecards that you're going to be able to hand out that everybody's going to have. So you'll know all of my stats, you'll know all of my stats, I'll know all of yours. You'll have that reference point. So without picking up each figure on the board to see what everything is, you'll have that information right in front of you to streamline that process. So okay. that's what we're gonna, rather than do it there, it's nice to see those stats on the on the standees, but we wanna really draw attention to the art style Felix has done, because it's to me it's the thing that draws this out bigger than anything else. When I first saw this game, I fell in love with the art and the story before I ever played the game. Yeah. So, so how are the miniatures gonna be handled? Are they gonna be base colored? for each of the individual factions? So they're, each faction is going to have their own color, right? Okay. So, because we don't want to have that sea of gray effect when you sure, have, right. yeah. have yeah. miniatures. It, like it would be a sea of gray, too, yeah. with all those miniatures. Yeah, yeah, especially when you think about, like, with the Dark Seed. There's 35 right. miniatures. It's a lot of gray miniatures all over the right. board, right? So you're talking about an, an up to a six-player game with all the groups. You're talking about 80 miniatures on a board at once. So everybody's going to be different colored. Uh, like the Dark Seed, my faction is going to be, like, a yellow color, and yours is going to be a an olive green color mm -hmm. and yours is going to be a silvery white and yours is going to be a, a reddish color right so every faction has their own specific color and then of course we know people are going to paint them too so oh, of course yeah. I, I can't wait to see that we yeah. have some we have some people i would never on that. do it because i'm yeah. awful at that but i would love to see yeah it. we've commissioned a couple painters to do some paint jobs for us so hopefully we'll have those done here fairly soon so people can see those well uh, i gotta say for this type of game and if you watch the channel, you know this is not exactly my kind of game. Sure. But the asymmetry is the big hook mm -hmm. for me. I mean, as we've hammered home big time. And it's just, it makes me want to play again. It makes sure. me want to try a yeah. different faction. And then all the stuff you just mentioned. I mean, this game sounds like it has a ton to offer. You can play it this way one day, this way mm -hmm. another day. Yeah, it's, it, to me, this game is almost infinitely expandable because the, the way that the factions jump in and out and then all the different modes that you have too. Yeah. So I, I really, like, I'm having a lot of fun working on it. Uh, Felix is great to work with. Uh, but I'm always having fun, like, just thinking, like, we talked about a couple things today and I was like, maybe I should add that to the <laughs> game. So you never know. You might see yeah, it. Yeah, so. I mean, that game was so close. And even just when you watch other people play, like watching Jeremy shoot all those missiles everywhere, it's like, I kind of want to try that faction. Yeah. Watching David dig all those tunnels, I'm like, that's kind of a cool little puzzle. So Not to mention the puzzle of the cards themselves. Like, we yeah. kind of skipped over that entire thing. The, oh, yeah. The cards and the way you utilize those cards and them all having different abilities, you're drafting those cards. So if you like that part of Euro mm -hmm. game too, there's a lot to consider every time you get a handful of cards. Yeah, that's yeah. another one of those uh, touchstone experiences where you look at cards in a game and you're like, oh, have you seen this one? Yeah. yeah. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. And... There's so many different ones, and you have the different actions or phases, yep. so it's like multiple combinations of different things that can take place. It's really, really cool. Well, there's always that element of a little bit. You can't truly hate draft in this game, but there are things you can do, like, hey, I produce a lot of units. Do you want to give me a card that has a lot of production on it? Right. right. There was right. one I, I struggled with passing you that gave, like, four combat actions. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man... You could really use four combat actions. I could really use it, and there I may have used the, it. There was a point in the game when Jeremy had to be pretty hammered to the point where I think I only had two units on the board. Yeah, yep. you were so down low. I couldn't even use the four combat actions, but I didn't want you to have them. Yeah. 
Yeah, it makes sense. There's because there's you have more cards than you could ever use, but yeah. that is a part of that choice too. Because once you pass it, you see what they cho what chose and what you can pass on to the next person. I like that option. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very very cool game. Yeah, absolutely. So that is Sukuyumi from Gray Fox Games in, in partnership with, with King, King Raccoon. Raccoon. Games, Don't forget yep. that, Matt. Thank you for walking us through the entire Absolutely game yeah. and Anytime. introducing that to us for and sure. to hopefully a wide variety and, and of people. Us, of course. Yeah, well, that's we what... knew that was going to happen. Make <laughs> I don't sure thank you for that. Make sure you guys go to their Kickstarter page to yeah. see the final components. What you saw there was the original version that was Kickstarted two years ago. So I'm sure you're going to be in for a treat. Mm -hmm. We're going to be in for a treat because we haven't seen much of it yet. Yep. If you guys have any questions, make them in the comments. We'll make sure Matt trolls those and answer those back for you. And we will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.